It's great to be with you, and uh, it's my honor to serve you in Washington. I thought I'd give you an update on two or three things, and then um, I'll take some questions. I want to be fairly brief, but um, I will give you a quick update on ISIS and the refugees and some international stuff, transportation budget, and tax extenders. If there's anything else anybody wants to talk about, I'm happy to talk about that too. Did everybody see what happened this morning? Uh, over Turkey, so uh, the the Turks shot down a Russian uh, fighter jet with a uh, an F-15 that uh, we have uh, sold them, and uh, as you probably know, Turkey is a member of NATO, so the uh, NATO alliance is uh, was meeting uh, earlier. I think they're still meeting. I haven't seen a statement from them yet. It's a very tense time. And what happens is when America doesn't lead, sometimes things get into chaos. And I, I wish we had a stronger international leader, I will tell you personally, uh, because the world is in turmoil. We don't need to be the world's policemen, but we sure need to work with our allies and friends around the world to look after the American interest. And uh, today, events kind of got away from us because we are taking a back seat right now, and, and I think we need to um, we need to be a little more engaged because the alliance of, under NATO kicks in whether we're, we were engaged before or after or not, uh, and we would have an obligation under our NATO alliance. So I just think we need to be much more engaged in things. Uh, I believe that we need to come up with a real strategy to defeat ISIS and uh, Daesh, if you want to call them that. That's a name I, I prefer to call them. Um, and. I think that may or may not involve um, uh, an alliance with a lot of countries. I would say it does with our NATO partners, with our regional partners in the region. Uh, it does not necessarily mean American boots on the ground, but it means somebody's boots on the ground. And I think our regional partners in the area are the right people to be boots on the ground, whether it's the Kurds or uh, you know some Egyptians, some Jordanians, some um, folks from Turkey. Uh, to make sure that we do this right. And, um, and we might need some advisors, but I don't think we're going to need a lot of boots on the ground if we put together a strong strategy. But I think that's a really important uh, thing that we get right. And I'll tell you, after the attacks in Paris and what folks say are coming attacks internationally, we need to be ready. And I would rather take the fight to them than let them take the fight to us. That's my personal opinion, I will tell you that. Um, that's a little bit about ISIS. The refugees, um, you know that the uh, president does have a plan to bring more Syrian refugees to the United States. I led the effort last week uh, to say, hey, we need to make sure, number one, we can vet who the folks are so we get, not, we get good people and not bad people. We get people who are uh, truly refugees and not people posing as refugees who would come here to hurt us and hurt our, our people and our way of life. So uh, I do think it's really important that we do that. The FBI director said just last week that he's concerned that the vetting process doesn't work. Um, and that's because there's not a lot to vet him against. So we do need to improve that process uh, and make sure that we keep Americans safe if we're going to bring Syrian refugees here at all. Uh, and I we passed a bill last week uh, by a, a uh, overwhelmingly bipartisan number. It's a veto-proof majority that we sent to the president that said, hey, let's fix the process before we start bringing a bunch of folks here. And I hope he will, uh, he will do that. I think it's really important. Um, real quickly on two other issues, and then I'll take questions because I know there's multiple speakers. Uh, the transportation budget, we have a transportation budget that we're about to pass that's about a, a six-year budget. It'll be the first time since I've been in Congress we've done a long-term budget. I'm excited about that. When you just drive up the road and drive through Bloom Carroll, you can see how important a transportation budget is. Now, we were lucky the uh, Ohio Department of Transportation found money for a, uh, an on-ramp and interchange that was going to go at Refugee Road in Franklin County and just reprogrammed it into uh, Fairfield County at Bloom Carroll, and that's what's made that project move about 10 years ahead of schedule, which is exciting, and it's great, and it's gonna be good for anybody that commutes from 
Columbus to Lancaster, Lancaster to Columbus, it's going to speed you up at rush hour in the evening by about 10 minutes. Who's ever been stopped at that light for three or four cycles? Probably everybody in the room. I know I have. So I'm really excited about having a transportation budget that will help us get big projects done. There's a chunk in there, uh, about $4.5 billion a year, if the language stays the way it, the way it is. It's in conference now that will be for giant projects, things like the Brent Spence, Brent Spence Bridge in Cincinnati, which is a billion dollar project and a very vital north-south uh, artery for the United States. So I'm excited about uh, getting that done. It's gonna be great for getting Americans to work, getting Americans to go wherever they wanna go and getting products and services to where they need to be in a timely basis. So. Uh, that's uh, a big win, and I'm excited to be coming to the finish line on that. It should happen before the end of the year. The other thing that should happen before the end of the year is the tax extenders. Who here cares about 179 business depreciation? There should be a few hands in the air. I know Dave Levesey does. A few other folks. Uh, that We're working to make that permanent maybe in this, but uh, at the very least what we're going to do, and that and the R&D tax credit, but all the other temporary tax policy, that we call it the tax extenders. Any tax policy that's not permanent, we vote to reauthorize every year. We've been doing it on an annual basis, but it's gotten messed up. So last year, we didn't pass until December 19th the bill for 2014. It's already November, and we haven't passed the 2015 bill. So this year, when we do the 2015 bill, we're going to try to create some certainty by passing it retroactively for 2015, so it'll give you some certainty backwards on things we should have already done, and prospectively, potentially for 2016 and maybe even 2017. So it could be one year back, one year forward, one year back, two years forward, but we should create some more certainty. And I will tell you, as a general philosophy, I do not believe in temporary tax code. I think the tax code should be set, it should be permanent, it should let people plan and do business planning. Uh, a temporary tax code is like the worst thing if you're a business person, because then you don't know what your tax rate is, what your policies are, how you expense things. It is, uh, it's really bad and we need to get rid of our temporary tax code and make it permanent. But to the extent we can't do that yet, we're gonna at least make it uh, go forward as far as we can, as far as we can get a compromise between the House and Senate to make it happen. So I am hopeful that it'll, we will uh, set most of our tax policy um, definitely for 15 and 16. And, and if I can get it done and some of us can get it done, it'll include 2017 as well to create some certainty out there because people need the certainty for planning purposes. So uh, we're working on that. I, I feel pretty good about the chances of that happening as well. So that's kind of some things that are going on and, and where we are at the federal government. Obviously, the presidential race is starting to suck all the oxygen out of the room. Did anybody go see Mr. Trump yesterday? No, I did a little press conference before he came to town. Um, wasn't really kind to him, but um, <laughs> that's because I'm, I'm concerned about some of his foreign policy um, positions and uh, I didn't really say I was opposed to him. I just said I hope he reconsiders some of his policy positions. Does anybody have any questions of me on anything that's important to you? I'm happy to answer questions on any issue you want. Yes, sir. I have endorsed Governor Kasich, uh, and it's made a huge difference. He's now at 2% in the polls. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I, I think he, uh, he would be a, a great commander in chief. He's balanced the budget at the federal level and the state level, um, and he's helped turn around Ohio's economy. So I think he'd be great. Uh, he doesn't, he hasn't completely caught on yet. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I, you know, he's our governor. He's done a great job. And I think because something that's really important to me is the balanced budget amendment. I usually talk about it when I'm up here, but today I focused on the things that are going on right away. But if we don't balance our budget with an $18 trillion deficit already and more deficit spending on the way, our kids are not going to have the same kind of economic future that we've had because they're going to be paying back all that debt. They're going to have all that debt over top of their head and it will make their economic future not as bright. And I'm really worried about it. And uh, because Governor Casey has been so involved in the balanced budget, 
amendment and because he balanced the budget before, those are the reasons why I endorsed Governor Kasich because it's so important to the future. And I've got young kids, a lot of you have kids and grandkids, and if we don't do something about it, it will impact their economic security and our national security because when we owe every country around the world money, um, it's we become, you know, the guy who wants a cheeseburger today and will gladly pay you on Tuesday. And I don't think that's uh, that's the kind of future we want our kids to have. So that's why I've endorsed Governor Kasich. So the Excel pipeline, uh, they uh, pulled back their application. I'm disappointed, um, but I understand because they've been waiting for seven years and it's been disapproved by the president multiple times for butterflies and, you know, other allegedly endangered species. Then it was rerouted because of the bats and butterflies, and uh, he still didn't approve it. Um, we are still a petroleum-based economy. And uh, unless somebody invents some back to the future car anytime soon with a, some, you know, Mr. Fusion on the back of it, we're gonna be a petroleum-based economy. And I think we need to acknowledge that we are so close to energy independence with all the, um, in, all the energy revolution around fracking and things, which is great, but we need um, a North American energy independence. I'd rather buy oil from Canada, which is a country that we've had no differences on foreign policy with since the French and Indian War uh, than I would from Mexico and um, Venezuela and countries that don't like us so much. So that's my, that's why I support the XL pipeline. And in fact, huge, Bipartisan majorities support it, and it's unfortunate that it got stopped. And um, I think they're going to, sounds like they're going to route that across Canada and sell it to China now. So it's, uh, the oil will still go on somewhere. It's sad for America and our economy is what it's sad for, yeah. Thanks for the question. Anybody else? One last one? I don't want to hold you up too much. I know there's a bunch of other speakers. I'm proud to be part of your team. Uh, working for you with your state and local officials and um, I'm glad to see them here today and they're great friends and we work really well together. Thank you so much.